One of the most difficult aspects of programming is thinking across multiple dimensions, or in other words, keeping track of items at different tiers or different levels. We've explored this idea previously with lists that held other lists. Well, similarly, a key in a dictionary can hold a value that is another dictionary. Many times, a nested structure like this can be really helpful in modeling real-world relationships. That's what we're going to be exploring in this lesson. For example, let's think about television shows for a second. Each TV show has a collection of seasons, and each season has a collection of episodes. So how can I model a relationship like that? Well, I can begin by declaring a TV show's variable, and I'll set it equal to a dictionary. I'm going to break up this dictionary over several lines, and each internal key value pair, I'm going to indent one level deep. And I'll show you why this is beneficial in just a second, because as we start declaring more nested dictionaries, we're going to keep nesting the indentation of each one so we can identify where each one begins and ends. So let's make the keys in this top level dictionary uh, some popular television shows. So one of my favorite TV shows of all time is The X-Files. So I can add that right here, The X-Files. And to this string key, I'll assign a value of another dictionary, right? The value can be any Python object, so why not a dictionary? So again, I'll give it some curly braces, and again, I'm going to break it up across several lines, and for my key value pairs for this nested dictionary, I'm going to indent them as well one more level, one more indentation level deeper, so we know that they belong to this dictionary rather than the most external one of TV shows. Okay, so one key that I can put here that seems fitting is season one. And let's make the value for this season one key in my nested dictionary another dictionary, right? We're going to go a couple levels deep here so you see how complex and hairy it can actually get in real life. And in this dictionary, let's add a couple more key value pairs. Maybe I'll have one called episodes, and that is going to store a list of episode names. Maybe I have one called scary monster, as well as scary alien. Another key value pair I can add in this dictionary can be something like genre, which I'll attach to a string of science fiction. And finally, I can have a key like year, which represents the year that the season debuted, and that, of course, was 1993. So we're starting to populate this data structure with a lot of nested dictionaries. Sometimes it can be a lot of information on the screen at once. So there are some helpful tools available in VS Code to help you navigate. So if you hover your mouse on this left panel, you'll notice that these drop down arrows appear. And if you press any one of them, it's going to collapse the dictionary at that level. So for example, this dictionary right here corresponds to my key of season one. So if I press this collapse button, it's going to hide it. It's not going to delete it. It's just going to hide it. You can see here my line numbers jump from three to seven, which means it's kind of uh, hiding lines four, five, and six. And I can do the exact same thing for any level or any indentation of this dictionary all the way to the top. So for now, what I'm going to do is expand it back so you can see the entire image. And now let's go ahead and add another key value pair to this dictionary belonging to my X-Files key. So again, I'm going to put a comma here after the value for my season one key, which is a dictionary in itself. And this is to separate the key value pairs in my X-Files dictionary. And here I can provide another key value pair. Maybe I'll have a key of season two, which will also correspond to a dictionary. Right? And really the goal here is just to practice declaring these multiple nested objects because many uh, common problems that beginners uh, run into with nested data structures happen here. So one common problem, for example, is forgetting a comma or adding one too many commas. So I recommend you follow this lesson and then try to go even uh, more la levels and layers deep. So you sort of start to get a sense of just how hairy and gnarly it can get. So again, we are in a nested dictionary belonging to a key of season two, and that entire key value pair is found within a dictionary belonging to a key of the X-Files, and that key value pair is found in a dictionary uh, assigned to a variable called TV shows. So we are several levels deep right now. So in this nested dictionary, let's add a similar episodes key. I'll assign it to a list with a single string of scary conspiracy. And maybe the genre for season two was a little bit different. Let's say it was more horror based. And the year for it was 1994. 
All right, so right here, I do not wanna put a comma because that is the final key value pair within my X files dictionary. But let's say I want to add another key value pair to my most top level dictionary of TV shows. I have to remember that that comma has to go right here, right? And if you ever get confused, again, you can collapse any one of these dictionaries to know uh, kind of or see a simplified representation of the file where you can see where it begins and ends, all right? So now below, I can add another key value pair. And of course, the key here will represent another TV show. Another one of my favorites is Lost, and I can assign Lost another dictionary. And here, let's just do one more nested example. I'll have a key of season one. It'll correspond to another dictionary. Here, I'm gonna have a similar key of episodes. Maybe we'll have an episode in season one like what the heck is happening on this island. Maybe I'll have a genre here of science fiction. And maybe I'll have a year here of 2004. All right, and I think this is pretty good. This has given us a pretty complex nested data structure. So the last thing I wanna do in this lesson is just practice extracting some of these values from all of these nested dictionaries below. So let's begin with this challenge. Let's say I want to find out the second episode of the first season of The X-Files. Let's break it down one step at a time. So the first thing I can do is print my entire TV show's dictionary. And that's not gonna help us much, but I just wanna show you that everything is gonna appear on the right-hand side, which tells us that the syntax we have here does not have any errors. So if I want to find out about The X-Files, I need to navigate to this dictionary. How can I get that dictionary? I can get it by its key, which is The X-Files. How can I access a key in a dictionary? By providing a pair of square brackets. So here I can do something like the X-Files. All right, and I'm gonna execute this with each additional uh, right, uh, piece of code that I write so we can see the changes on the right-hand side. So now we have this nested dictionary. Let's say I want to get the information about season one. Well, now I need to provide the key that's gonna give me this dictionary, another nested one. And of course that key is gonna be season one. Since we know that this is a dictionary, we can index into this dictionary by providing a key again in square brackets immediately after the conclusion of this pair of square brackets. So I'll add another pair here and I'll add my key of season one. So this is gonna take us to yet another nested dictionary. It is this one, right? And now, since I want to get the second episode, I'm obviously gonna need to get this list right here. So how can I access this list? Well, it is a value for a key and of course, the way I access a value in a dictionary is with a key. So once again, since we have a dictionary here, I'm gonna add another pair of square brackets and the key I wanna provide here is gonna be episodes. That is finally gonna get me to that list of episodes in season one. And if I want the second one, remember it's going to have an index position of one and I can provide that in square brackets as well. So now we're indexing into a list instead of a dictionary, but the syntax remains the same. And on the right-hand side, hopefully we're gonna get scary alien. And when I execute this, we do indeed. And we have now navigated several levels deep, several uh, tiers or, or levels or layers down into this complex web of nested dictionaries. Let's do a couple more examples so that you have a chance to practice this. What I encourage you to do here is that you pause the video and try to write out the syntax yourself, and then I'll take you through how we actually solve it right here. So let's say the next thing I want to find out is the year of release for season two of The X-Files. So you can pause the video now, and I'll rejoin you in just a couple seconds. Okay, so our goal was to get the year of release for the second season of The X-Files. The syntax is gonna be exactly what you'd expect. We start with our most outer dictionary of TV shows. In order to get any value from a dictionary, we need to give a key. In this case, our key is going to be the X-Files. That is going to give us another nested dictionary. In here, we have two keys, season one and season two. I, of course, want information for season two, so I'm gonna access that key in our nested dictionary. That is going to give us yet another dictionary. We see it displayed right here. And I want the year of release, which I can get as a value for the key of year. So here I can provide that key again in square brackets. It's a string, so remember your double quotes as well. And here we can find out that the year of release was 1994. And here's one more challenge to close this lesson off. Let's find out the genre for season one of Lost. The syntax for that would look like this. Once again, begin with our most outer level dictionary. It has keys, two keys in fact, the X-Files and Lost. We want the value uh, for the Lost key. 
that's going to give us a dictionary. It only has one key value pair, and the only key in there is going to be season one. And that's going to give us this nested dictionary. And of course, in here, we want the key of genre. So again, we provide it in square brackets. We're just going further down and further down into all of these nested dictionaries. And that allows us to find out that the value for genre for season one of Lost in our TV shows at dictionary is science fiction. And that's all there is to cover in this lesson. We talked about nested dictionaries. The value for a key in a dictionary can be any valid Python object. It can be a string, a number, a float, a list, or another dictionary. And as you can see, there are certain real life scenarios that just have that nested structure, okay? And you may argue that this may not be the best way to represent this. For example, I could have said, well, since the seasons imply some idea of order because season two comes after season one, maybe it would have been a better idea to store this content in a list, right? That way we, we might have a list of dictionaries. The first dictionary would represent season one, then season two, etc. Uh, and that's absolutely valid depending on the program that you are designing. But of course, the goal here is to just start thinking more about nested structures, an object that holds another object that holds another object and that holds another object. And the syntax for accessing those nested objects is going to be the exact same. If it's a dictionary, you provide a key in square brackets. And if it's a list, you provide an index position in square brackets. And even if it's a string and you want a specific character, it's also going to be a piece of square brackets with the index position in there as well. So starting to think about these tiers and levels is a really good way to kind of grow yourself as a developer and also uh, start challenging some of those brain muscles because this can be a pretty tricky idea. You always have to know where you currently are as well as where you want to go to find the piece of data that you're looking for. That's all there is to cover in this lesson. So I will see you in the next one.